System of, system of a down. TOXICITY! System of a Down, classic review, let's go. This is the sophomore full-length album from California alternative metal outfit System of a Down. The breakthrough record that would solidify the band as an essential figure in modern metal. With singles like Aerials and Toxicity and Chop Suey. Toxicity was also the band's first platinum album, and they would go on to sell 40 million copies worldwide of albums throughout their discography. And as much as it was a part of my musical diet when I was a teenager, uh, metal music in the late 90s and early 2000s, it was kind of a shit show. Of course, anyone can retrospectively go back and cherry pick any number of great underground releases from that time period that have withstood the test of time, from Opeth or Boris or Mastodon or Sleep, but it wouldn't really give you an accurate portrait of the metal landscape at the time. Because all that thrash metal and groove metal, it would eventually give way to some really tacky hybrids of rap and rock as well as new metal. Now, of course, there were some great groups that crafted their own sound and image during this time period, your Marilyn Mansons and your Rage Against the Machines, Korn and Deftones and Tool and Slipknot, but there was still so much crap to cut through, especially with each new group sounding more cookie cutter than the next, putting more and more of an emphasis on either a larger visual gimmick or just trying to sell this small goth image. But System of a Down was a much needed breath of fresh air in an ocean of cringy rap verses and down-tuned two-note riffs. And even though the band did take a lot from the prevailing grooves and guitar tones that were popular in metal at the time, time, they built their own little unique sound into it over the course of several great records. And what made these albums stand out was their bold personality, pure absurdity, potent rage, and infectious hooks. Also, the band's sense of melody was much greater than a lot of their other metal contemporaries. They were also not shy about working their Armenian roots into their music as well, through the percussion, the melodies, through the harmonies, or even the instrumentation on a given track. And I would argue that influence only got stronger as the band progressed. Their lyrics were boldly political for a metal band at the time too, and this dates back to their early demos and debut album. While the ridiculous sugar and uncompromisingly dark spiders served as functional singles for their first record that kind of drew listeners into the cult of System of a Down, deeper cuts like Sweet Pea and War weren't hesitant to dive into topics like American imperialism and religious fanaticism. And the band wasn't just writing music that was socially aware, but socially ahead of the curve. Toxicity's official release date was just seven days before the September 11th attacks in 2001, but the lyrics on this album were written as if they had the hindsight of the next seven years of authoritarian garbage that the Bush administration would serve up. And it's kind of depressing to admit that this album's themes of pollution and addiction and private prisons and endless war, they're only more relevant now. It would be an oversight on my part if I also didn't mention that frontman Serge Tankian is one of the most enigmatic and expressive frontmen in metal ever. He's really the kind of singer that you only get one time in a genre and one time only, as his sung vocals on Systems Records were not only incredibly compelling but showed a ton of volume and range. I really love his very nasally timbre, sits up very high in the throat but has such a strong sense of pitch. Meanwhile, his dynamic and cartoony shrieks and growls and and screams remain unmatched in metal in their energy and character. Meanwhile, guitarist and songwriter Darren Malakian wasn't shy about bringing his own vocals into the fold more and more as the band grew in popularity, and this brought another interesting dynamic to their sound, especially on Toxicity. And on Toxicity, you have all these elements coming together and totaling into this incredibly raw and heavy and varied sound. All of it's being filtered through the production lens of the legendary Rick Rubin, who had also helped develop the sound of bands that inspired System of a Down, like Slayer. Now, Toxicity is a pretty tight listen, even for its 15 tracks, because the band had the talent to allow themselves to write these fantastic anthems and mystical ballads, but also these blistering two-minute onslaughts like the Bizarre Jet Pilot, a track that even the band has admitted doesn't really mean all that much. <laughs> and then there's the very hilarious tribute to group sex on the song Bounce. But between the lines of eccentricity and weirdness that are 
place throughout this record, Toxicity does deliver some very significant songs and statements. Like on the opening track, Prison Song, which is most likely the most effective example of straight sloganeering in a rock song, but actually managing to keep it entertaining. Even in the midst of Surge shouting crime statistics and corruption headlines in the middle of verses and choruses, oddly it adds to the song's incredible sense of fear and tension. Meanwhile, the riffs on this track are hard as friggin' cement. Dun 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 Then there's the harrowing deer dance, which is all about police brutality, especially toward peaceful protesters. This track eventually progresses into imagery of kids getting pushed around with automatic rifles. And even though the message and the aggression of this track are pretty bold, the most breathtaking part of it is actually the super mellow bridge, where you get these beautiful, rustic guitar melodies. Toxicity also features a greater sense of spirituality, especially on tracks Forest and Science, which directly reference the environment being destroyed at the hands of human progress and technological advancement. Themes that are also expressed on the song ATWA, which stands for Air, Trees, Water, and Animals. The track is like a forlorn send-off to all of the great things that the planet has given us that we're slowly killing off. However, the song's message and title takes from the ecological logical credo of Charles Manson and uh, I mean I could I could think of better figures uh, who have an environmental message that you might want to reference but as far as I can tell Darren does sort of separate Charles Manson's heinous actions from what he thinks about the uh, the livelihood of our planet, I guess. There are quite a few cuts on this record that dive into themes of control as well, whether it be more widespread and nefarious strains of it on the song Shimmy, which features some very odd and repetitive and simplistic lyrics, but it can be gleaned pretty easily that the track is about conforming as a result of indoctrination via a fake education, or even control is the result of an addiction or dependency on a substance. Like on the song Needles, where the band likens being addicted to having a mind-controlling tapeworm stuck in you that you need to pull out of your ass. Pull the tapeworm out of your ass, hey! Addiction is also in the spotlight on the most popular song on this record, Chop Suey, which is kind of lost in translation in the song's fragmented narrative, as well as the band not being able to name the song after the self-righteous suicide reference in the hook and instead having to call it Chop Suey. If you listen very closely at the start of the song, you can hear we're rolling suicide, making reference to the original title of the track. But this song essentially boils down to a conflict between two people. One person who obviously has a problem and they're doing everything that they can to hide it and just keep it under wraps. Either that or just not deal with it. And meanwhile, we have an antagonist who's trying to expose this problem, take this person to task over this problem. This judgment and this pressure eventually drives this person to suicide that almost kind of turns into like a religious experience over the bridge where they're basically crying out to God, why have you forsaken me? It's pretty heavy stuff and much heavier than I think a lot of the young listeners this song appealed to appreciated at the time, especially since the track has been kind of covered and replayed so much that it's lost all meaning. Then there's the gorgeous and haunting title track, which culminates a lot of the album's ideas on losing touch with nature and spirituality and humanity essentially getting sucked into this modern, over-prescribed society. There's also a mental health angle to it as well. Meanwhile, the closing track, Aerials, reaches an even larger emotional and instrumental climax with tons of soaring vocal harmonies and strings and grand guitar chords. The lyrics on this track exploring themes of oneness, as well as isolation and putting up walls, basically needing to throw out small-mindedness and egoism to attain real freedom. Eerily odd how much <laughs> this record kind of goes against the grain of a lot of the prevailing politics of the past few years. Though I guess back then things weren't really all that different. The only thing that's changed now is the factor has been multiplied pretty greatly. Overall, Toxicity is an amazing album, a metal record that I don't not love a single song on. It is a beautiful and also a brutal record, too. It's ridiculous, yet also deadly serious. It's nuanced and complex, and then also in another breath, it's just grossly aggressive and primal. And that's because this record, like many great ones that came before it, has a fantastic duality to it. Arguably one of the best metal records of the past 20 years, one of the best metal albums alternative metal has ever brought to the table, and certainly a masterpiece from a band whose prime music-making years were cut kind of short. Tran.
Zishin, have you given this album a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like, please subscribe, please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head is another video for you to check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, System of a Down, forever.